All you entrepreneurs out there, we have a fun one today. We have Jeff Stacer. He's a family law attorney that has been in the business close to 40 years. During that time, he has had his high moments, low moments. We get to dive deeper in this episode on how he's been able to keep focus on, on his low moments. Take a listen. Please subscribe. Love to hear your feedback. Welcome to the road to growth, success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with real estate agent Vinny SD. All right, I'm here with Jeff Stacer, uh, family law attorney. Thank you for for coming on the show today. Hi, Vinny. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right, so so tell the people a little about what you got you in this. Well, first, tell us about your practice. I'm a family law attorney. I, I started November of 1979. I've been a temporary a pro tem judge 15 years. I've evolved into doing about half litigation and half mediation. So okay. I do family law, and we offer all sorts of uh, related services. Okay. And, and what brought you into the business? I, I have a, a passion for helping people. That probably came, I was thinking of being a doctor, but then when I realized what being a doctor was, I, I, I got off that track and <laughs> I went to law school anyway. And, and uh, I just like helping people. Well, I have to jump on it with, uh, with the uh, doctor and the law. Isn't the schooling fairly similar, or is it just too much of a headache or too much of a stress, or what was that idea? I thought that being a doctor, I would deal with things that I can see. Okay. And no, doctoring is is math, chemistry, and and, uh, uh, molecular attachments and all that kind of stuff, and I I really wanted to deal with people. Fair enough, fair enough. And uh, have you been able to deal with enough people since you've been in this practice? Every time I think I've seen it all, I realize I haven't. Uh, I, I'm, I absolutely am, am sure that fiction comes from real life stories. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, um, you know, this podcast is all about trying to hear about people's struggles and how they overcome them. And you've been in the business for an extended period of time. What are some of the struggles, some of the big, big hurdles that you've seen in your business? I, I'm not a, a pay stub person. I'm, a, I'm a, I'm, s- I'm self-employed, and so. You have ebb and flow of cash flow, and, and you, you always, as a pay step person, I guess you can show up just about any way to work. Uh, in my line of work and your line of yeah. work, you got to show up ready to go and, and uh, with a positive mental attitude and broadcast that kind of positive energy. Yeah. So you, you got to always kind of stay up. And, and as, a, as an entrepreneur, a business owner, you know, 2008, you're saying that that recession really infected your business, correct? That, um, you know, I tried to start another business in 01, uh, August of 01. We put about 50 grand into it and paid for a speaker, 10 grand to come and talk, and 9 11 hit. Oh, and, uh, and then we, uh, we, in 2008, we tried to start another uh, business, and, and the recession hit. The recession didn't hit my law business until uh, winter of 2010, spring of 2011, and basically all. All income stopped. <laughs> wow. Okay. And, and we still had, you know, tons of overhead going through retirement accounts. Uh, many, many, many other attorneys in my profession were were hit with that. Everybody was scared, not knowing what to do. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I got into a bad mindset of, uh, uh, and I started sharing my asking other attorneys about their problems and sharing the problems and so on. And and uh, but I figured a way to get out of it. Wow. Was there a time that you thought about maybe stepping away from the law firm and, and looking at another business or? No. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. To 2001, 2008, and yeah. 2011. Uh, the bad time to start a business, 2008, uh, that, that crashed. But uh, the one I started in 2011 is my, my side business, side gig, is uh, yeah. doing really well. Yeah, fair enough. Now, so that would that'd be really tough. So. To, to push through it, it was it was finding good support of other attorneys and, and walking through the struggles with them? No, okay, absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> uh, this other business has a, a training program, a leadership training program that, that trains you about your mindset. I went to a presentation, um, I think it was in Vegas, in, in uh, July of 2011, and, and uh, there was a, a presentation about um, handling objections yeah. if you're doing sales. and. And the uh, the whole point of the presentation was you've got to handle your internal 
objections first. Yeah. And uh, and basically it was about mindset and and using what I heard in that one presentation. The very next day when I got home, I flipped my uh, my mind around and all of a sudden things changed. Instead of dwelling on the problems, which kind of attracts that kind of stuff, yeah. I, I I created and dwelled on where I wanted to be and and that's what started coming in almost immediately. So how, how long did it take for it to actually become something consistent or what did you do to, to change your mindset of instead of dwelling on the bad things, but focus on the positive things? There's a great book called Mach 2 with Your Hair on Fire by Richard Brooke, okay. uh, B-R-O-O-K-E. And um, he talks about basically how to reprogram your subconscious. And uh, for example, I, I'm, in, I'm self-employed and, and Sometimes there's a dip in income, and God, I'm wondering how I'm going to make payroll, rent, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And um, and if you get into that mindset where you're you're worried and fearful, then that's what you attract. So I actually have this little ditty I do at night, and maybe you'll laugh, but it's uh, I imagine I'm shaking a money tree that uh, instead <laughs> of leaves, it's got hundred dollar bills. I shake it, I, I sing a little ditty before I go to sleep, and about shaking that money tree and and the the hundred bill, the hundred dollar bills all fall down. I gather them up in bushes, and take them uh, to the bank. Now, is that reality? No, but it flips my mind into a mindset of abundance. Yeah, and then I go do what I need to do, as opposed to fear. And when you flip your mind into what you want, all of a sudden the filters get rotated and your radar goes out, where your subconscious is trying to find things, in in all of your sensory data that's coming into your head that uh, will support that uh you well that so that had to be a total out of the left field kind of thought analogy or, or not analogy but a thought of having the abundance mindset so when they started telling you this your, your new company that you joined up with started telling you i want you to do this i want you to think before you sleep i want you to actually think about this this money tree quote unquote how did that that hit you i i came up with a money tree idea okay. but when you get advised from people that are obviously superbly personally developed mm. and very, very successful, <laughs> you listen, don't you? Yeah. I, you listen to a fat guy about how to lose weight. That doesn't work. Listen to a poor person about how to make money. No, you, they don't have any credibility. These people, this guy that he did an incredible presentation uh, that uh, just had my jaw dropped and, and it, uh, it jerked me out of my... Uh, bad mindset so having that mindset um having that mindset that focus every day the money tree focusing on the positives as that would if you were back in 2007 2008 2009 that time that was really difficult if you had known what you know today back then would that think a world of difference be a world of difference for you or how would you would it be the same or what do you think you know even in hard times that are people there are people that do pretty well yeah Okay, and, and uh, I, I absolutely believe that, that your mindset and rotating the filters to support that, because your brain handles, your subconscious handles all sorts of uh, sensory data that your conscious brain you know, isn't really even aware of. Yeah. And that controls the filters of what you become consciously aware of. And so you can walk right by something that could be tremendously helpful, but if you weren't looking for it, you won't see it. Yeah. And, uh, so hang around good, solid people that have what you want and, and, uh, and stay positive and take action. No, I, I definitely I couldn't agree with you more. Now, going on the fact of, of bringing on new clients, your online presence was, I think, another hurdle that you had to overcome, correct? That's been... I've been a, a divorce lawyer for over 39 years. I have a huge satisfied referral base, yeah. and, and I, I should be able to live on referrals from that huge referral base. Yeah. but. No, the last five, six, seven years, and research uh, surveys are showing this, people are Googling before they're asking friends and family for referrals for you know, divorce, family law help. Yeah. And um, so uh, I've had to, about half of my business comes in from social media, the internet, you know, Googling. Yeah. Well, and, and from what I understand, for especially for attorneys, there's a lot of red tape of what you can actually advertise, right, on social media and post on there. Or... You, you know, when I started practice, attorneys were severely limited on what they could say, how they could advertise and all. 
Um, these days, uh, you can't make promises. You can't say anything that's untrue, but uh, y you can do just about anything, I think, otherwise. Yeah, okay, so it's it's fairly fairly straightforward there. Do you, so is, do you advertise on other platforms or for the online presence, or is it really just social media just being a, taking hold of that presence? My, my particular target market is probably 35 and up. Okay. And, uh, and into the early mid sixties, something like that. And, and so it's more uh, of a Google internet uh, website presence and all that than, I mean, I've tried some Facebook and all that, but it, it's, I, 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 and I'm still experimenting with it, but I, I think it's, it, I'm heading more towards Google and, and people that do searches and making sure my website is, is really active and not static. So with the, with the struggle of, of building an online presence, has it been yourself that ha have been taking the chance, taking the risk of doing it, or have you outsourced that? Or I, I found that I would go to chamber events and meet people, collect cards, and I'd end up with a, a stack of cards that I'd throw away every four or five months because I, I didn't follow through immediately, and then it felt embarrassing to contact somebody I met two months ago. And so I hired somebody to keep me planting the seed out there because in family law, somebody can have a, you, I can have a marketing contact seven years ago and they're finally ready to do it. Yeah. So I, I hired somebody, uh, and they, they, I call her a marketing coordinator that helps set up lunches, coffees, and, and, and helps me uh, extend out my, my reach into the chamber events, works with my internet guy, and basically is managing all that kind of stuff. Um, to, to keep it happening, whereas I, I just don't have the follow-through time to do that. Yeah. Well, and the I know this is a lot about struggles for entrepreneurs. One of the things that was very unique when we talked uh, before was the, your, the way you look at mediation, the way you look at divorces, the way you look at bringing two people together with a common goal. And I think we always have our internal struggles that we're dealing with and external struggles that we're dealing with. And so we have to overcome that. So in, in essence, you're overcoming these two struggles, two hurdles for these two individuals. How do you look at mediation? How do you look at divorces? How does that? Nearly all of the family law attorneys will do a consult with somebody for the purpose of getting a retainer, you know, amount of money, put in yeah. a trust account, and then doing a court case. Hmm. I, I don't do that. We have free workshops twice a month uh, where my wife and I show up and answer questions. She does the child and, and the emotional issues and I deal with the legal. We, uh, her class, she's taught over for over 20 years on how to get parents to stop um, reacting to each other and to be the best parents they can be. And, and so we, we, I, I'm looking for ways to finesse settlements and to get people, keep people out of the court system and, and keep the, the costs down so the people are in and they're, they're 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 not dwelling on one of the worst times in their lives, and and they're 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 in and out, getting done with it, and then I, I fortify them with with audios and PDF books and references to uh, things because you don't want to repeat mistakes, and, yeah. and you want to you want to learn from what happened. Uh, I remember after I left my wife back in 1990, I, I I read a book called You Just Don't Understand by Deborah Tan, and and I realized you know how much more sophisticated female communication is. <laughs> and and I, I just wasn't catching her message, and that got her more and more frustrated, which evolved into her sort of stabbing me in the heart to try and catch my attention. So I, I really want to pass on education to people so that they start learning. Uh, the women to how to dummy their communication down a little bit and the men how to maybe catch more of the what they're trying to say. And, uh, I mean, it's a fact. Women start from the time they're itty bitty little girls learning how to communicate, and guys are all about kicking something or playing sports or whatever, and and so they're very different from us. So if you could go back to, let's say you're coaching or training your your younger self, right, on on a topic like that, where you're you're with the knowledge you know today, how would you help them get to where you are quicker? I guess. In my profession? Yeah. Oh, in your profession, in, in just communication, a lot of this stuff. It sounds – you've learned a lot from over those those many years. My wife has been into personal development, Dr. Dina Stacer, for over 30 years. If you Google her name, 
D W E N A Stacer. I think the first ten pages are full of her without anybody else. So she's very, very adept at marketing and personal development and and, uh, and all of that. And um, I, I would really push people to, to figure out what they want, read that Mach 2 book, really focus on achieving what they want, and then gathering all the other education along the way uh, so that they learn how to – I mean, your, your network – your net worth is worth – is your network that they say, mm. and uh, and and you want people to, you surround yourself by. You, you want social capital. Yeah, you want to have as many different connections as as possible, because it's people you know that get you where you want to go. Yeah. So I- if a new uh, a new family law attorney, right, was coming to the business or in law school right now, and they're thinking about getting into the business in the next couple of years, would you say that'd be the first one of the big steps you want to do is is really building a, a strong foundation around you, a big, a big network, or absolutely, and and also education and communication, and really um, education on on helping people to figure out what they want, and and people, you know, motions drive court cases, and I, I just hate long court cases because you end up with a client that's even the, if you totally win, they aren't really happy because it just cost them a fortune. Yeah. Do you, do you see any any changes happening? And I don't even know if there's been changes or big changes happening over the last oh, yeah. year. Is there big changes that you foresee happening in your profession? In your the, the, the society and people can't afford the current adversarial system for divorce. And there have been all these programs that have come out to, to turn it into an administrative function and, and keep people out of court and, and – uh, we still have court cases, but it, it just emotions drive court cases. It isn't logical. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's somebody that that had some emotional injury, or maybe they're just whacked. That's a legal term of art, uh, <laughs> and and they 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 can't stand to be alone, and and they keep the fight alive, alive, alive. And the, the problem is that that really devastates the children, and and they end up repeating things uh, later on. Where we're, we're, we're having more and more parents that are messing up kids that turned into messed up adults that then mess up a future generation. And so th- that's, that's my wife and my passion to, to try and stop that. And you have a workshop, right, once a month or is it twice a month? The first Wednesday night of every month and the third Saturday morning uh, – of every month, we throw a big table out there. We used to have much bigger, yeah. bigger things, but uh, we and and my wife, who's a uh, many times over published on on the high conflict child custody stuff, and and she's taught that for over. She got her PhD for developing a curriculum and a program, and she's done trainings across the United States, Canada, and as far away as Hong Kong. And uh, wow. so, twenty plus years, she's taught basically parents how to disconnect and how to raise. I mean. You don't get a manual when you you have a kid, and um, and she teaches all sorts of really cool things that will teach the parents to teach their kids basically how to plan for the future. It all boils down to how to plan for the future. As a parent, if you've done that for your kid, you've done your job. I think if people were listening right now and they wanted to come to the workshop or reach out to you because they had questions about uh, family law, what would be the best way of, of getting in contact? Website? What would be the best way? Well, Stacer Law, S-T-A-C-E-R-L-A-W dot com is my main website. And uh, and my wife's website is parentsinconflict.com. And uh, you can reach either from, from either website. But uh, there's a workshop pull down. There's mediation pull down. And there's frequently asked questions. There's all sorts of information there that, that can help. And and so we, we love to have people come to the workshops, get their questions. Is a lot of people don't even know the questions to ask. Yeah, you don't and, know. You don't know. Yeah. And and you aren't alone. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You're going to learn from other people's questions at the the free workshops. Fantastic. Uh, well, Jeff, I, I appreciate all the time you, you've given us, and hopefully, you people listening out there were able to get them good information and hear about the struggles that Jeff's overcome and and how he's changed his mindset. Jeff, any any parting words that you want to say? Yes, Vinny. Uh, I think you probably do clients, your clients, a great service. You are, are all about 
growth uh, mindset yourself and, and personal development and, and, uh, and service. And, and I, I am really impressed with the things that you're doing with your business. And, and I, I sure am happy and glad to have met you. And, and no, guys, I just I didn't pay him for, for the, that level of kindness that right there. That's sincere. just Jeff. Right that there. was sincere. <laughs> I, I, I know I get marketed by home loan people and real estate agents every day. Every day, and, and you are several cuts above the, the norm. <laughs> I, I'm actually very sincere about that. Appreciate it, Jeff. Well, Thank hope you, you guys had a, a great one. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, or on the website. Have a great one. Thank you for listening to The Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. Please like, subscribe, and stay connected. Visit www.vinnysd.com. Yeah, I created a website. Hope to see you again next week. Team Vinny SD, signing off.